Live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. Meanwhile, major landmarks across Tasmania were lit up to mark the coronation of the King. The Tasman Bridge and State Parliament among buildings donning the traditional shade of purple. The Lieutenant Governor will host a reception at Government House tomorrow afternoon to celebrate the occasion. Incumbents have swept this weekend's Upper House elections, winning by enormous margins. Victors at both ends of the state say there's fury over the Macquarie Point Stadium as the government confirmed it would use a controversial planning pathway for the build. After six years representing Romney, Sarah Lovell set to spend six more. You never know what's going to happen on the night and I will admit that when those first few booths came through, there was a big, um, big sense of relief campaigning on cost of living to collect more than half the primary vote, beating out Liberal challenger Gregory Brown. The government's vote at this election was appallingly low. Labor doubled the government's vote and I think that's a wake-up call to the government. Uh, we were very, uh, very much behind our candidate Gregory Brown. He did a great job. Uh, we hadn't run a candidate in Rumney before. Incumbents won out in the three counts. Independent Rosemary Armitage will spend a third term representing Launceston. Ruth Forrest recorded the highest ever primary vote for a field of three or more. I was um, very gratified and deeply humbled by the enormous support I got right across the whole electorate. One surprising topic for the North West, Macquarie Point. A universal um, comment across my electorate is the cost and the location of the stadium. Um, I didn't meet anyone who supported that extravagant um, expenditure right now. The state government is now looking to tag the development as a major project. It would be the second time the controversial fast track pathway had been used and in the process it sidelines the Hobart City Council. Well it is disappointing and I think the people of Hobart won't be impressed that this assessment of a very important public place is being done by unaccountable, faceless bureaucrats. Have a look at the Hobart City Council. It's one of the most anti-development councils in the country. The Tasmanian Planning Commission will take over and take on the community consultation. They've never been asked if they support it and now the government looks like it's riding roughshod over community views. Views which will be heard next Saturday with a rally in opposition to the stadium to be heard at Parliament Lawns. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. The Taralea village will once again house workers with Hydro Tasmania purchasing the town. It will be used to house the generator's employees as they work on the power scheme, which is also slated for redevelopment. The town was built nearly a century ago, but is in top shape thanks to a recent owner's upgrades. It comes at a price tag of $11.2 million. Those preparing to say I do have had the chance to learn more about their upcoming big day at a wedding expo in Hobart. Dressmakers, wedding venue hosts, hairdressers and caterers were on hand to guide couples through those big decisions. They can actually come and meet the vendors, talk to them face to face and actually you know, get a feel for who might be the right fit for their perfect day. Depending on what your budget is or what your dream is, you can have absolutely anything at your wedding. Vendors say getting in early and booking businesses is critical. Launceston Airport is leading the state in post-COVID recovery. The Northern Gateway has benefited from airlines looking to create new domestic connections. Launceston Airport's passenger numbers soaring to new heights. We're at now at 97% of uh, pre-COVID levels, which is um, far and away above most airports in Australia. That makes Launceston Airport the third fastest recovering gateway behind the Gold Coast and Townsville. The visitors are coming back to our state in tremendous numbers. For the first quarter of this year, we've seen more than 360,000 passengers. All signs are positive towards the airport's future, with increased capacity sitting at 97% and limitless growth expected for the foreseeable future. We're expecting um, a, a record year and if, in, the, in the next financial year as well and we could go as far as 103% pre-COVID 
pre-COVID numbers. So this is a great news story for Tasmanian. With tourists coming for a range of reasons, the local community is welcoming the numbers with open arms. Just the stimulus that the visitor economy brings to our small and medium businesses in the region is fantastic, to our hospitality providers and to our larger businesses. Talia Jordan, 7 Tasmanian News. A Launceston gym owner has pushed through physical and mental challenges to break a world record. Michael Vincent spent the past 24 hours on an air bike surrounded and supported by family and friends. It's a long minute, guys. He blitz the former record of 636 kilometres by more than 33 kilometres. Some minutes there, I was just watching it, and I'm just like, this has got to be at least three minutes, it's not one minute. This is a joke. So, yeah, look, sometimes it was very, very slow, yes. Despite the personal trainer spending the last three and a half years recovering from a foot injury, followed by a series of staph infections, he used the challenge to raise more than $2,300 for a Tasmanian program helping new mums navigate their first six months. In the NBL1, it was a mixed night for the Hobart Chargers against Bendigo last night, with the men winning while the women lost by 34 points. The women, however, had a better afternoon against Nana Wadding. The Chargers broke away after half-time, eventually recording an 87-74 win. Kayla Steindl once again starring, top scoring with 33 points. Crossover there, right back out. Steindl going to step into the three, oh. bottom of the net. The men, meanwhile, finished their road trip in style. 25 points from Sam McDaniel, helping them to an 87-77 win. Northwest Thunder, meanwhile, suffered a heartbreaking loss to Waverley this afternoon. They led at half-time before the Falcons edged ahead third quarter in a seesawing encounter. Northwest appeared to have sent the game to overtime, but were denied by one final play. A chance for the game. Fade away. Dylan Stokes oh, makes the pocket. Oh, 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 the final buzzer. Stokes oh, for the win. The Tornado is also having a day to forget against Waverley. Launceston no match for the Falcons going down 98 to 63. In the WSL, South Hobart remained top of the ladder after a 3-0 win over Clarence at Darcy Street. Three second half goals getting the job done for the who also remain undefeated after six games. Elsewhere, Devonport defeated Launceston United to move above them into second spot. Three first-half strikes helping the strikers secure a 3-0 win. More than 100 drivers have taken part in the first Baskerville 1000 race for the year. The racing category, a challenge of both finding a bargain and being able to know your limits. Driver, start your engine! Up early on a cold Hobart morning, these drivers were looking to create heat. An eclectic mix of cars taking part in the Baskerville 1000. The entry qualification, a simple requirement. They can't be any more than $1,000 when first purchased. Uh, once people have the car, they can then uh, jazz them up. It was picked up in a backyard in Glenorchy for $100. The limit aimed at making motorsport affordable. We want to get people involved who haven't been able to in the past because of the cost. So this is a, a low entry cost formula. Rather than a need for speed, this category has an insistence on being consistent. You set a lap time that applies to the car and all of the drivers have to achieve that same time within one second plus or minus. You've got to hold yourself back. Um, there's an element of... Yes, just keeping it nice and consistent. Some entrants represented motorsport history, others a little more unique. This designed the result of a brainstorm over a beer. We uh, came up with the idea of a dive bomber and based it on a, on a World War II plane. Organisers say the event is also aimed at inspiring the next generation of drivers to get behind the wheel and have a crack at the sport. We also have a number of people who progress to full racing. Yes, it is a stepping stone and it is working. John Hunt. 7 Tasmania News. Good evening. A frosty start to a chilly Sunday. Hobart reached 12 degrees, 13 the top for Launceston, Devonport and Burnie. 
Lyolini, the state's minimum, dropping down to minus 6 before reaching 4 degrees. 13 for Flinders Island, Winyan and Low Head. King Island, St Helens, Friendly Beaches and Bushy Park, all 12, Strawn 11. Speckled cloud over the state today, bringing that cold southerly air. Further out, patchy cloud over southern coastal areas. More cloud over large parts of the country. A cold front will brush over the state tomorrow, followed by some southwesterly air. A large high remains over the bight. West to southwesterly winds of 15 to 25 knots, increasing to 30 knots throughout the day. A strong wind warning for waters east of Flinders Island around the southwest coast. Strong winds also for the far northwest coast. A frost warning for large parts of the state, more severe around the central, north and Midlands areas. A shower or two and 15 in Hobart tomorrow. Dover showers and 14, early frost and showers for ooze. Some morning frost for Launceston before a partly cloudy day. 16 in Devonport, morning frost and a mostly sunny 14 at Scottsdale. A possible shower and 15 for Burnie, showers for Strawn and Stanley. A sunny 16 for St Helens, Swansea, partly cloudy and 16. Some severe morning frost at Ross, 13 the top. Showers for the west, south and central regions on Tuesday. Some possible morning frost, fine elsewhere. More showers about the west and far south on Wednesday. Possible morning frost and fog in other areas. And Thursday, some areas of morning frost and fog before a fine day with a chance of some possible late showers in the northwest. A sunny 22 for Brisbane tomorrow, a shower too windy for Sydney, Melbourne 15 and a sunny 35 for Darwin. And right now in Hobart, it's partly cloudy and 7, Launceston and Devonport remaining clear. And Lou, it is looking like we could be in for a bit of a frosty start tomorrow. It certainly feels like winter's here already. Thank you for that. Nick. That's all your news for this Sunday evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. Kim and the team will be back with you too. Have a lovely evening. Good night.